Welcome to week 5 install MySQL video. Name, my name is Charles W. Bill Marshall. That's my email address and cell phone and, uh, to use during office hours if you have questions. Alright, so this is part of CIT 253. It's a three credit hour course. The course's name is Data Driven Web Pages. Uh, and as always, Blackboard's the official place to turn in and assignments and get assignments. Uh, Supplemental information is available on my website. All right, so MySQL. It's pronounced MySQL. It's an open source relational database management system. Its name is a combination of My, the name of the founder's daughter, and SQL, the abbreviation for Structure Queried Language. And MySQL is a free open source software under the terms of GNU general public license and it is also available under a variety of proprietary licenses and all this information is sourced from Wikipedia at that link. Alright, so what's its history? Well, MySQL was owned and sponsored by a Swedish company MySQL AB uh, which was bought by Sun Microsystems which then later was bought by Oracle uh, in 2010. When Oracle acquired Sun, uh, one of the founders forked the op to an open source My source MySQL project named MariaDB. And here in comes the advantages of forks and open source software. By definition, when something is forked, it's going to diverge. Uh, and so we're now 10 years downstream and one of the decisions you have to make is, do you want to be on the pure MySQL? And so far, Oracle has played nice and has not done what everybody was afraid they would do and kill it off or do something. And so this class is being taught based on using the MySQL database, not the Maria, date, Maria database. It's not that the other way is wrong. It's a choice that needed to be made, and that's the one I made. Okay. MySQL and LAMP. Well, it's a component of LAMP, the Web Application Software Stack, and others, and it stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, Perl, PHP, and Python. Uh, MySQL is used by many database-driven applications, including Drupal, uh, Joomla, PHP, BB, and WordPress. WordPress being a big hitter in open source web creation. MySQL is also used by many popular websites, including Facebook, Flickr, MediaWiki, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay, it was written in C and C++, uh, but they, the SQL parser was written in Yak, which is another Unix-derived uh, processor uh, or interpreter, but it's used as a home-brewed lexical analyzer. Uh, MySQL works on many systems. I'm not going to read all these, but the net effect is it'll run on almost anything you can imagine. And uh, and they were somebody thought it was significant that it was a port even to open VMS, which uh, VMS was an old mid-range operating system, and they can run there. Okay. You deploy it. MySQL has been built and installed manually from source code. So should you want to, you could compile up from the source code. Probably don't want to do that. It's more commonly installed by a binary package unless a special customizations are required. And when you get into something like Facebook, you can bet they've done some customization. But we're going to use the plain vanilla. Most Linux distributions, the package management system, can download and install MySQL with minimal effort, though further configuration is often required to adjust security and optimization settings. Uh, and so here we have kind of a pictorial of what's going on. We have the internet out here and we've got crackers, bad folks and competitors and customers and botnets all hit the internet. And we come to the internet from this network hardware and on the hard work hardware plane we have CPUs and RAM and we have storage. And this hardware plane talks to the kernel, in this case Linux, but it could be Windows or one of these other operating systems. And then that kernel 
runs a web cache and a web server, Apache probably, uh, CGIS scripting like Perl and PHP and Python, and databases. So for those of you who like pictorials. All right, so now we get to install MySQL on your Win 10 PC. And I found this link to have really good instructions. Uh, and I used it when I installed. And so I believe that you will find that it will help you step through the process. We've already used this to install Apache and PHP. And now we're going to do the last part of it and do the MySQL. And that link is on this PowerPoint presentation, which you can download, so I'm not going to read it to you. All right, once you get done with that, you can access MySQL by opening a browser in your Win10 PC, going to the address localhost slash PHP MyAdmin. And when you do that, you ought to get a screen that looks like that. And so you're going to log in with the, when you installed it, you gave it a uh, admin user and you're going to use that user to log in with and when you get in it's going to look like this and uh, so first thing we want to do is add another user it's always good to have another way in uh, and so you're going to click that link under the user accounts tab and you're going to fill in the user information and here is a link it's a long link and that's why i'm glad you've got uh, you can cut and paste this off of out of the powerpoint which is a really clear full descriptive way of how to add a user next thing we're going to do is create a database and i'm going to ask you to create a database using your email prefix uh, so, like my email address is cmarshall0050 at kctcs. Well, all I'm using for the database name is cmarshall0050. I'm asking you to do that and do your work under that because that way when 15 or 20 of you s send me files and I'm looking at them all, I'll be able to tell whose file I'm looking at because I can check the database name. All right, and then we're going to create a table. And here is the table we want to create as our first one. It's called state demo, and it's got a state code. And I'm not going to read all this to you, but it's basically a state master file. It is interesting to see that we're making that you've got to have a state code and you've got to have a state name. They're not either one's null, acceptable. Uh, and we're going to create a primary key and a unique key. All right, so we are going to create a table and fill in the name. Oh, and know that we we knew that we only wanted two columns, so we changed the size to two. Well, just a second. We only wanted two columns, so we changed this down from I think it was six or eight when we first started, but we told it we only wanted to have two. And if we got it wrong, we could add a column or drop a column later during the process. And so we put in the first field, the state code, and told it was a character and that it was two. And we told it it was an index. And when it said it was an index, we made the choice that it was a primary index, which got the name primary. And we told it we picked the column we wanted it to be and the size two. And we said OK. And before we said OK, well, so we've got the two names filled in here. And before we press Save, we could do Preview SQL, which lets us look at, is this what we thought we were doing? Uh, and lo and behold, it is. And so we can close that and then press save. And when we do that, the table's created. And that's what it looks like. 
and we can insert four states. We want to insert Kentucky, Ohio, Virginia, and Indiana. And so we're going to fill in the value of the state code Kentucky and K, you know, KENT and the value of Ohio OH and then Ohio. And then we're going to come down and we could preview the SQL to see if it's what we think we want. Uh, and then we can press the go button. And there's the two rows that were inserted in the SQL that it ran. If we go to browse, we can now look and see the two rows. Now, we have your job is to add the last two states. And notice that because we indexed it, it's sorting them alphabetically uh, by the primary key, which makes sense, but just to notice that it worked that way. All right. Now I want you to create this table. And those indexes. And you can do that with the SQL tab. You can come over here, paste in the SQL, press the Go button, and lo and behold, when you go look at the structure, it built it all. So there's two ways, really good there, there's two ways to create a table. You can do it with SQL, or you can do it with the Insert tab where it's more of a Tudor text kind of a thing. And I think this is self-evident, you know, the name what size it is, that it's unsigned, it, no, you can't have nulls, it's, there's no default value, we didn't give it any comments. If you wanted to change it, you would click there. If you wanted to drop it, you would do there, and more gets you that. Uh, this table is new and fresh, so if there's ever a time you wanted to try and play, this is the time to do it because you can drop table and recreate it and not cause yourself any problem. And you're on your own little environment. Okay, so once we've got a table, how would we get it out to someplace else so it's on more than just this PC? Well, we can press export and do a quick display uh, or custom, and I've always used quick. We want it in SQL format we want to dump zero rows because we don't have anything yet and we press go and when you do that it downloads to wherever your browser downloads things and if you go look at that file oops you and guess what I can't scroll around in it you see the indexes and above this was you know it's all the SQL to recreate that data base or that table in this case all right. Now, one of the things we've kind of saw when we were in our CIT 170 was we did a lot of talk about foreign keys. And if you've had database classes before this, I'm sure you've seen foreign keys. So we want to ensure that in our contacts table, we don't have states that aren't in our state demo table. And so we need to ensure that each contact state underlying code exists in the state demo state code field. And I recommend this video as it seemed to me a very clear explanation of how to do that. And it's something that MySQL does very well. Uh, and so now we get to your assignments for this week. And these will also be on Blackboard, but just while we can talk about it. I want you to create a table named SKU that has these fields. SKU code, it's going to be a character 40, and I want a unique primary key. Description 1, character 30, not null. Description 2, character 30, not null. And I don't want you to write description. I don't want just to be D-E-S-C underscore 1. Uh, weight, unit of measure, character 3 code. Weight, decimal 10.4 or comma 4. A sale, unit of measure, or character 3. And what we're going to not create but would expect to have is someplace a unit of measure master file that you take these codes and go back and find out what they are and in that it would probably give you conversions from this to that or you'd have a join table uh, list price decimal 
10 comma 4. All right, I want you to create a compound key that's not unique on DECS underscore 1 and DCS underscore 2, and I want you to allow duplicates. Now, I know that it's not, that is not SQL syntax, but it's a lot closer than you're going to get a lot of times in the real world. And so this is to try to not have this be overly simplistic, but to actually start applying what you've learned instead of just following the steps and painting by the numbers. All right, I want you to create, after you create that table, I want you to create a foreign key constraint between contact state code and state demo dot state code where you can't have a state code in contact that doesn't exist in state code in the state demo table. I want you to make up data and add four records to the new S to your new SQ SKU table and it should be your instead of you. Uh, make up data and add ten rows to the contacts table and at this point, you shouldn't be able to create a contact in a state that doesn't exist. Uh, export the SKU table with the four rows of data that you added. And then export your entire database to another file. Now, we showed you how you get on a table and then you can export. Well, if you get on a database, the export tab works for exporting the whole database. All right. There's an interesting site for SQL tutorials I want to just mention to you. It's really not something we're going to use a lot, but I found it very interesting and informative. The site allows you to create an account with no apparent charge. Uh, I suggest you use your KCTCS email as your user ID, because that'll demonstrate to them that you are a student. Okay, Oracle provides a browser-based SQL programming environment at that website. Uh, and I found it really pretty spiffy. Okay, SQL syntax. Most of the SQL syntax is common across database providers. I'm giving you this because that site that I just said was spiffy, they're going to teach you all how to do everything in Oracle speak. And even though SQL is common across database providers, each enhances or extends the SQL syntax to, they, they say, allow them to offer a superior database. And since we've already talked about e-commerce and features and advantages and benefits and differentiation, you can decide exactly how much you believe of that. Uh, but the point being that because Oracle, like the SQL, likes the SQL, does not mean that another vendor will allow it. In fact, the other vendor may have the exact same capability to do what you want, but their command will be almost certainly different at some point. So it's good to get the concepts off this site, but don't try to memorize syntax. Whenever you're programming, they're going to have a cheat sheet that you can learn where they put their commas and dashes and use that and don't waste cells trying to memorize it. All right, so that was week five, install my SQL. I hope it was uh, helpful. If you have questions, contact me by email or call me on that cell phone during office hours. I look forward to your comments. Thank you.